Good evening, baseball fans, and welcome to the beautiful Flathead Valley in northwestern Montana. My name is Scott Gladstone, and I'm so excited to bring you another edition of Pioneer League Baseball. It's going to be a great contest between the visiting Missoula Paddleheads and the home team, the Glacier Range Riders, looking to extend their two-game winning streak and maybe make it three, and not just three, three in a row against the defending champs. It would be Huge for this squad looking to get on the best stretch of the second half of the season, especially after getting swept six games to none by the Missoula Paddleheads in the last stretch they played against the squad from just two hours down US 93. The record for the Missoula Paddleheads coming in, they opened their second half with a 4-2 series victory over the Ogden Raptors. The two losses this series against the Glacier Range Riders have them at 4-4. Four and four. On the other side, the Glacier Range Riders, 3-5. and five. After a 1-5 series loss against the Idaho Falls Chuckers, they've won two straight uh, last night and the night before that to make it 3-5. and five. Their record, they're just two games back of first place but they currently sit in last place. A win for the Glacier Range Riders would put them tied with Missoula at four and five each. The Glacier Range Riders last night outdid what they did on Tuesday night. It was nine to two in the opener for this series. It was 13 to two last night. It was scoring early and often for the Glacier Range Riders. They put four across in the first, a, two, a Drew Sims two RBI double emphasized what they did there. Ryan Cash in an RBI single in the second inning, and then three more in the third. And if that wasn't enough, then they pushed themselves over the double-digit scoring mark and then a double-digit lead in the eighth inning. Robbie Scott led off the inning with his first professional home run. Ryan Cash had an encore homer that put three runs across. And then Sims, another RBI for the guy who made his debut on Tuesday night. A run scoring base knock rounded out the offense at 13. Noah Barros had another marvelous start for the Range Riders. He went seven innings and allowed just two runs. And they were only two solo homers. He only allowed four hits total. Uh, outstanding performance for him. The bullpen went hitless in their few innings that they had to take over. The Range Riders, something they have to get through tonight. And I'll mention this a little bit more because it is... A huge stain on their resume as a franchise. This year, they have not won on Thursday night. This is Thursday night, and getting over this Thursday hump is going to be huge for the Range Riders this season because you can't have a big O in the win column on any day of the week. They are 0-8 on Thursdays. And... As our PA announcer Tony Hernandez announces the starting lineup for the home side, I'm going to do the same. I'll tell you, leading off, it is Ben McConnell. And if you tuned in last night, you're going to recognize this lineup a lot because it's the exact same. Ryan Cash bats second. Sam Linscott bats third. Brody Wofford fourth. Dean Miller fifth. Livingston Morris sixth. The bottom three, Sims, Scott, and Brant Broussard. It has worked to the tune of 22 runs in the past two games. And they'll try and keep it going. The offense on the other side for the Missoula Paddleheads has struggled, and so they have a lot of tweaks to their lineup, including notably the uh, disappearance from tonight's lineup for their big power header, Jason Newman. He is not going to start today for Missoula after having an offer in the first two games. Riley leads off, Wilman bats second, Sparks third, Gatewood bats in the cleanup spot instead of Newman. Cameron Thompson bats fifth. Sixth is Greenwald, and the bottom three are Akins, Perez, and Chung. Also absent, if you'll notice, from usually playing in the two spot. And sometimes we've seen him in the second leadoff, but that's McLean O'Connor. He's also getting the day off. He's had a couple of miscues defensively over the past two games, but he will not start Cameron Willman. Bats in the two spot. And, of course, Patrick Chung, who I mentioned, rounds out the bottom of the lineup. Not a ton of time for Chung, but he gets to show his defensive acumen at second base today. Well, it's time for our national anthem. Listen up for it. And when it is over, we will have a Pioneer League Baseball from Flathead Field.
leaves the eyes of blind and the lives. We invite you to join the singing of our national anthem. Comes early light, what so proudly we may at the twilight's last meeting, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fights o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly sweet. Back here, we are about ready to get underway for game number 56 of this inaugural season for the Glacier Range Riders. <clears throat> we are also over the halfway point in terms of total games played at Flathead Field. We've played 24 home games. There is 48 home games allotted to each Pioneer League squad. That means game number 25 starts the second half of the home schedule, a very backloaded home schedule because of the delayed home opening of this brand new stadium built in just under 10 months. Broke ground in late August. We are almost at the point, right around the point, <laughs> where they started to build this stadium, and it's impressive what has been done in a year. The starting pitcher today for the Glacier Range Riders, it's the big right-hander, Rob Hamby. Man of many nicknames, I'll probably call him a few of those over the course of the day, but I can tell you that this man has an absolute stellar resume. The Continental Athletic Conference Pitcher of the Year, an honorable mention All-American. He was also a member of the Continental Athletic Conference All-Tournament Team. Absolutely lights out the 6'7", 250-pound right-hander. He's from Demurris, Georgia. And he started off his collegiate career at Winthrop, where he only made one appearance and then transferred to Georgia Gwinnett after a successful summer in the Alaskan League. And that is where he caught fire. His time at Georgia Gwinnett. 11 and 4 record, a 348 ERA. And he had 118 strikeouts to 26 walks over the course of his 3 years with Georgia Gwinnett. We're well, just about ready to get underway as the first pitch will come in to Brandon Riley playing left field and leading off once again. For the Glacier Range Riders, our home plate umpires, Brandon Snyder. I love that quick strike call that he just had there. I appreciate it, and I'm sure so do you as well. Stu Bertrand's the first base up, and Kelly Atkinson is over at third base. That breaking ball goes off the plate. Count goes to one and one. Batting lineup for the Missoula Paddleheads once more is Riley leading off. Wilman batting second, Sparks third, Gatewood fourth, Thompson fifth, Greenwald sixth. The bottom three are Aikens, Perez, and Chung. That one misses again. Count goes to two and one. First pitch at 7.04 here, 91 degrees in the Flathead Valley. Cracking the 90-degree mark 
It is hot out there, and you maybe heard me complain in the past couple nights. There might be even more so tonight. But Rob Hamby, he's from the South. Sure, he can take it to some extent, and only the first inning or so is has the pitcher's mound in the sun. You can see exactly where it is on your screen as it will continue to move to the upper right. This is a foul ball. Count goes to, count stays at two and two. Swung on another foul ball. Two, two, no outs, base is empty here. Top of the first, just underway at Flathead Field. That one swung on another foul ball. A tough customer here is Brandon Riley. The last two days, there were there was no batting practice from the paddleheads as they opted to go with kind of a show and go technique. Today they did take BP. Swung on and missed. A pesky opening batter, but Hamby makes the result a result that he has been used to. 35th strikeout of the season for Rob Hamby. He's got one away in the top of the first. Other stats this season for Hambone. 4.74 ERA, two wins, one loss. And 38 innings pitched. Make it 38 and a third now. Has allowed three home runs, a whip of 1.421. Swing and a miss from Cameron Willman, who bats second in the lineup. Good speed from Willman. Good defense as well. Plays the ever-important position of shortstop. The 0-1. Swung on. Foul ball. Glacier Range Riders overall on the season. Check, check. I think I got you back there. Sorry about that. I think we briefly lost you audio-wise. But I believe we have you back online. 
Got to talk you through that last play. You probably saw what happened. It, hit, hit, it was hit over to Dean Miller at third. Fielded, thrown high to Brody Wofford. Wofford leaped up to grab it, turned, and flipped the glove <laughs> on the helmet of Cameron Willman. And I think he got him. That's what the umpire over there said at first. And now they're going to come over and have a talk with Nick Hogan, which I think means they're going to explain to him that they're going to call him safe over at first. I don't know why they'd be talking with Nick Hogan. And they are saying safe over there at first. I don't know what the other umpires could have said. I don't know what if there was some sort of rule book difference that could change that. It's uh, not like if you have to apply a tag to somebody's head, I'm pretty sure you're allowed to do that. Brody Wofford is clearly jumping partially in the path of Wilman, but to get the ball, you're allowed to do that. So I don't know exactly what the reasoning behind the decision was, but Kogan not too upset about it. At least not visibly. But still a tough break. It'll go down as an E5, I believe. I mean, it should go down as an error. That was a high hit. This one's lasered out to right field. Backing up to the track. Linscott makes the catch on the run. Now he throws it in. Can it be... A double play, it will not. Not enough juice on it from Sam Lintz got back in, but a great catch on the run because that hit off the bat had Willman fooled. He was about to turn towards third, and then his third base coach uh, made the go-back sign <laughs> because he was in a whole lot of trouble there. But that has out number two on the fly out to right field. And there is two gone top of the first. If the call would have stood in theory, we would have three outs here. That that originally called out play over at first base. Two outs. Runner on first. This one's hit foul down the left field line. Up is Nick Gatewood. Batting in the cleanup spot, and I said a rarity for Jason Newman to get the day off. Robbie Scott has to come over and grab that one, flip it to the kids in the general admission area down that left field line. 0-1 coming in now to Nick Gatewood. Swung on. It's a foul ball the other way. Count goes now to 0-2 for Gatewood. Do have confirmation looking at the stats here. The scoreboard is a little bit off. Well, the only thing on there is off as it was scored an error officially on Dean Miller. Swung on a foul ball that knocks off the face mask of Drew Sims. Count stays 0-2 versus Gatewood. Other contests going on in the PBL today. Grand Junction playing Rocky Mountain, Great Falls and Idaho Falls, and Boise and Ogden. Rob Hamby about to throw pitch number 20th of a first inning that has made him work a little bit. But trying to get through it clean. 0-2, swung on, foul ball. Lots of foul balls in this first inning against Hamby. Only ball that came really, really well off the bat was the Lamar Sparks at bat prior to this one where he lasered that one into right field and almost turned into a double play. 0-2 with two outs coming into Gatewood. Misses inside, gets between the legs of both the catcher as well as the umpire. A ball will go down as a wild pitch and advance the runner into scoring position. 
plays with the rosin bag a little bit there, does our pitcher Rob Hamby. Hamby sets now and fires. Swung on into center field. It's going to be a base hit, and it's going to be a one nothing game. So the overturn of a call at first base ends up paying dividends for the Missoula Paddleheads. Comes back to bite Rob Hamby and the Range Riders. And it's a one nothing score line. Up comes Cameron Thompson after the RBI single from Gatewood. Foul ball. Count goes to 0 and 1. Oh, one, two outs. Cameron Thompson at the plate. And he hits that one foul down the left field line. Count goes to 0 and 2 now. Rob Hammy about to throw pitch number 25. He's pitched well, with the exception of that hit. That. Came against him. The run will go down as unearned against him because it was an error on Miller that allowed Thompson to reach. And in theory, there would be three outs anyway. Almost got credit for three outs. One, two, two outs. The pitch swung on and missed. Hamby is out of it, but an RBI single scores Cam or scores Cameron Willman from second base. Gatewood gets the RBI. It's one nothing. Paddleheads have their first lead of this series. We'll be right back for the Glacier Bats when we come back in the bottom of the first. Back here, we are in the top the top of the lineup. I was going to say a top of an inning, but we're in the bottom of the inning. The Glacier Rider, Range Riders are batting, which means exactly that. First pitch misses up and in to Ben McConnell. 
Nick Hogan not messing with a good thing. The lineup we've seen for the Glacier Range Riders has, has scored 22 runs in the past two nights, so he's kept it exactly the same. Again, not swinging. Count 2-0. McConnell leading off. Cash batting second. Lintz got third. Wofford fourth. Miller fifth. Morris sixth. And the bottom three, Sims, Scott, and Broussard. The 2-0 pitch coming in. That one misses. Now 3-0. and Austin Croson is the starting pitcher for the Missoula Paddleheads. 6'5", 230-pound southpaw. And he'll fire that one over the plate. Gets it to 3-1. and one. He is originally from Junction City, Oregon. And that'll be ball four. Drafted, Croson was, out of Lane Community College, which is located in Eugene, in 2017, and then again in 2019. In the 39th round, he was drafted by the Phillies organization, ended up playing in 2019 for the Phillies in the Gulf Coast League, or Phillies West, and had a 5-1 and record, a 282 ERA. As this one is hammered out to center field, backing up is Greenwald, but he'll make the catch. Not having a scamper too far. Came off the bat well of Ryan Cash, but all right to Greenwald. Up comes Sam Linscott playing right field today. The defensive lineman for the Missoula Paddleheads. Perez is behind the plate. His first start of the series. Thompson over at third. Willman, who scored the run last inning, is at shortstop, Patrick Chung, the second baseman. Nick Gaywood over at first, relieving the usual first baseman, Jason Newman, of his duties tonight. Riley is in left field. Greenwald is in center. And Lamar Sparks is the right fielder. First pitch coming into Lynn Scott, finds the zone, called strike count, goes to 0-1. For Croson, after that successful 22 and a third innings pitched, season for the Phillies West team. He got stung by what a lot of players got stung by, and that was COVID in 2020. No minor league schedule anywhere, and of course, even the MLB got thrown off their season regularity. Delayed start to that season and played with empty crowds. Empty crowds doesn't make sense, but they played with empty stadiums. Crowds cannot be empty. One and two is the count. One out coming into Sam Linscott, but first it'll be a throw over to first base where Ben McConnell will dive back in. So from 2019, after he finished his season with Phillies West, there was no baseball for Croson until this year. When he suited up for Missoula. Foul ball again. Still one and two. But he has been one of those nominees to kind of be called the ace for the paddle heads. A 5-0 and record in 10 starts. 4-7-2 ERA. And 34 strikeouts to 27 walks. Based on balls numbers, maybe a little bit high for Croson. But the Western Oregon graduate can't complain too much about his First Pioneer League campaign. That one misses high. Count goes to two and two. Two two. One out runner on first. The pitch. Jess misses inside. A great pitch from Croson there, but couldn't entice a swing out of Linscott and couldn't nick the inside part of the strike zone. 3-2, one out. McConnell over on first. Look for him to possibly try and swipe a bag. The Glacier Range Riders in this series have hit 338 including nine extra base hits, four home runs, and five stolen bases all last night. The 3-2 pitch coming into Linscott. 
Swings on it. Hit over to third. A chance for two. One. No, it will be dropped. And he's off. No. Oh. Oh, my goodness. He was off the bag when he collected that one. Uh, that. I don't know if you could see that because the second guy on second might have been blocking what happened there. But unless he's saying Chung grabbed that and then lost it on the transfer because that ball, I don't think it stood in the glove of Chung long enough to say that he cleanly caught that. It came right out and then Chung had to stretch and go down and grab it. And his foot was definitely not on when he grabbed that. So I think what they're saying is that he had that long enough, but wow. I, I thought immediately based off the umpire's reactions that he was going to say that he was off the bag when he ended up grabbing that ball and fully gaining possession of it, as you would say, especially in a football term sense of the word. But that was... Ugh. They're going to meet about it, and as we... Learned in the top of the first. The umpires can meet about things and change the call. Uh, I don't know if there's enough to do so here. And they're not going to do it. They are going to say that, Lins got, or that McConnell is out at second. Fans had the same view I had there. Ugh. Call it a fielder's choice, 5-4. And my guess is as good as yours, but I think that their call there was that Chung lost it on the transfer. Called strike to Brody Wofford. Count goes to 0-1. A couple decisions going against the Glacier Range Riders in this early going. Not going to make anybody cheering on the home team too happy. A one coming in. That one misses low. Count goes now to one and one. One, one, two outs. Runner on first is Sam Linscott reaching on a fielder's choice. In the dirt. Linscott's going. He's in safely at second. I don't know what that one's going to be called because it really could go either way. He was taking a big secondary lead, and he read the ball in the dirt and went for it. But I think because it was in the dirt, you probably are going to see our score air on the side of a wild pitch. But uh, I'm going to eat my words. He's called for stealing second there. So a successful steal is second. Count goes to two and one. Two outs. And now a runner in scoring position for Brody Wofford. Down the middle, a called strike. Count goes to two and two. Two outs, runner on second. The Glacier Range Riders in this series have hit 455 with runners in scoring position. A very good margin. That has helped their two wins. This one's hit over to first, and it's zipped right into the glove of the first baseman, Gatewood, for out number three. Nick Hogan, as he turns and walks off into the dugout, he looked right at our third base umpire and shook his head. That has been the story in the first inning. We'll be right back for the second.
Up comes Keaton Greenwald. He will lead off the top of the second. It's a one nothing game in favor of the Missoula Paddleheads. 26 pitches thrown in the first inning from Hamby as the Paddleheads made him work and then used a error, a wild pitch, and a base hit to get a run across and make it one to nothing. Keaton Greenwald at the plate to see a 1-0 pitch. Check swing, doesn't go, but it's in the zone. A called strike, count goes to 0-1. Do up this inning for Missoula, Greenwald, Akins, and Henderson Perez. Swung on a high, high fly ball against the clouds. McConnell will come in on it and make the play for out number one. Jared Akins coming in now. Akins, the Altadena, California native. Two strikeouts from Rob Hamby in the first inning of work. And a successful outing for him would be greatly appreciated, as that's pretty much what he's done all year. Been able to come out and have quality starts. And this one is a high fly to left field. Coming over is McConnell, and he'll get to the track. Before making that one, a lot of good carry on it. And that's right at the part of the outfield where it really starts to get deep. So that one needed a good amount of carry on it to get it over the fence. And a decent crack from Akins, but not enough. Another fly out to center field is good for out number two. Up now is Henderson Perez. He swings and misses on the first pitch. CeCe was the catcher in game one. Gatewood the catcher in game two. Here in game three of this series, it is Henderson Perez. We'll see who it is tomorrow when we get there. 0-1, hit to second. Cash fields, cash throws, and Henderson Perez is out on the 4-3 ground out. A six-pitch inning from Rob Hamby is all she wrote in the top of the second. We'll be right back for the bottom half of the frame.
Welcome back. We're in the bottom of the second, and it's Dean Miller that is leading off this half inning for the Glacier Range Riders. Dean Miller, one of just about everybody in the starting lineup that had a good night last night, but Croson trying to shut down the Range Riders. He did in the first. And the 0-1 now will come into Miller. Misses outside. Count goes to one and one. Another one that misses. Two and one now. It's in favor of Miller. Somebody we mentioned last night, the Range Riders didn't necessarily get in ahead of a ton of counts. But, uh, Huge factor for them was with two strikes, they found a way to do damage. That one hits the zone, and speaking of two strikes, we are now at two strikes for Dean Miller. Count goes to two and two. Swung on and missed. A strikeout of Dean Miller starts off the bottom of the second. Up comes Livingston Morris. The overall record on the season for Missoula, 40 wins and 16 losses. That is a heck of a record, and it was fueled by the huge win streak that they had in the middle of the season. Middle of the first half, I should say. We're in the middle of the season right now. Their away record is 18 wins and 8 losses. That one goes up high. Count goes to 1-0. and They're 22-8 and at home. That one on misses as well. Count goes to 2-0. and Swing and a miss makes it two and one. Austin Croson leads this Missoula Paddlehead squad in total innings pitched. And he really has had such a successful season as a paddlehead as this one's cooked out to right field. And goodbye, baseball. Livingston Morris has yammed one over the 375 sign in left center field. And Everybody in Flathead Field knew it off the bat. It just has that pop when Livingston Morris is swinging it. And I can tell you that Range Rider home run is presented by Hidden Homes Montana. Don't forget, Hidden Homes Montana is making a donation to Glacier National Park Conservancy for every home run hit by your Glacier Range Riders at Flathead Field, this homestand. A donation in the name of Livingston Morris there, who makes the game one-to-one -one with his solo home run. Count is one-and-one one for Drew Sims. Tries to follow up what Morris did. Morris? <laughs> Man. His swing is just so sweet. When it connects, it is fun to listen to. This one's hit over to Chung at second. Fields slides down and throws the first. Good for out number two here in the bottom of the second. Livingston Morris, in the past week, he has played really well. Caught a little bit of that fire that he knew so well right after he showed up from Georgia Gwinnett. One-to-one one is our score here. Tie ball game in the bottom of the second as up comes Robbie Scott. Speaking of home runs, he hit one last night, his first professional dinger. This one's a dribbler back to the pitcher. Croson fields and will run to first all the way himself. 
a one unassisted ground out. Not every day you see that. But Croson, a home run hit off him, highlights the inning. Livingston Morris goes yard, makes it one to one as we head to the third. Patrick Chung will lead off the top of the third inning. It is one to one after the Livingston Morris solo home run. Even this game, I got a couple stats for you from our analytics guys next door, at least for the night, Dawson Day and Drew Holwiger that are standing up there and reading the uh, charts for us. <laughs> 400 feet was that home run. And 112.1 miles per hour off the bat of Livingston Morris absolutely beamed into left center field. Squares to bunt, pops it up. It'll land and it'll go foul. And now it's foul. We're going to have another conference between the umpires. <laughs> that one went up. Drew Sims realized he couldn't get to it, so he slid right next to it, and then it had a wicked backspin on it and went into foul territory. Originally, the home plate umpire called it fair or was pointing his hand fair, and then everybody looked at him like, what? It's sitting in foul territory. It's called a foul ball. That would have been one, <laughs> one of the uh, most unique base hits I've ever seen. And I think Patrick Chung is smiling a little bit. When you pop up a bunt attempt, first of all, you're just usually happy to not have it caught for out. And I think he's smiling right <laughs> at the catcher, Drew Sims. Count goes to 0-2 after a exciting foul ball with the turf field here. The balls can, if they have a certain spin, take some gnarly hop on it. And as you can expect there, it did take a gnarly hop on it. This is going to be a race to first, and it's safe over at first. That one looked like a casual play for Brody Wofford, but just didn't turn on the Jets in time. And Patrick Chung ekes out an infield single. That's what that'll go down as, as Hamby... I think figured that Wofford was going to cover and best not to just get involved there. And it seemed like Wofford was going to cover right off the bat, so you don't knock Hamby for that. But it's a base hit. Patrick Chung, <laughs> he was going to find a way to get aboard, whether it be bunt, pop-up, gnarly backspin, whatever that was that they almost let him get on, or whether it be 
fairly routine play down the first baseline that he can just win the race. 1-0 and is the count to Brandon Riley with a runner on first and no outs. Swung on. It is not. Count goes to 2-0. and That one misses as well. It is 3-0 for Rob Hamby. His summer ball that he has played. It's been all over the place. Spent three summers in the Cal Ripken Collegiate Baseball League, and he's going to four-pitch walk Brandon Riley there. And for the Herndon Braves and the FCA Braves, which I assume are the same team, just a different name. And then he went to Anchorage, where he played for the Bucks in Alaska. And then turned around in his final summer collegiate summer. He spent in the Sunbelt League, which is owned by the same people that have brought the Range Riders to the state of Montana. And that's kind of where he popped up on the radar of Nick Hogan and the rest of the squad here at Ridge Run Baseball. Runners on first and second now with no outs. After Chung found his way aboard, ekes out the infield single. Riley gets on on a four-pitch walk and a called strike. Starts the at-bat with Cameron Willman. Willman 0 for 1 today, but he reached on that error and later scored the run. The ERA of the Glacier Range Riders in this series, 2.0 on the dot as they allow two earned runs in each of the first two games. This one's hit to short, fielded by Broussard, thrown to first. It is in time. Broussard just took it himself to second base. Cash got out of the way. A 6-3 double play gets two outs in the top of the third. Up comes Lamar Sparks. Something we haven't seen necessarily from the Missoula Paddleheads, which is something that Michael Schlacht is used to seeing from his squad, is some of that clutch batting. They haven't got a ton of runners that close to home, but even so, when they have, they haven't been able to put them across the plate as much as possible. Of course, last night, with runners in scoring position, they did not do anything, as it was just a Lamar Sparks homer and a Cameron Thompson homer. That was the two scoring plays of last night's game. Count goes to 1-0. Chung's playing around quite a bit over there on third. Got a look out of Sims that last time. See if he tries to steal home here. You never know. 2-0 pitch coming. Called strike. Got Sparks to limbo out of it. Good pitch there from Hamby. Count is 2-1 and one now with two outs. Hamby versus Lamar Sparks. Sparks is 0-1. for 1. He flied out to deep right field in that play that Sam Lentz got almost, almost doubled off Willman. Foul ball makes it 2-2 two and two now. Two outs. As Hamby prepares to throw pitch number 46. Swung on to second base. Sparks will not beat it out. The throw to first is in time. Hamby out of the jam. And the double play helps him out too. We'll be right back. No runs across in the top of the third. We'll see you in the bottom half of the inning.
Up comes Brant Broussard batting ninth in the lineup and playing shortstop. Going to see the plate for the first time and the final batter for either side to step up for his first plate appearance. First pitch into Broussard, skips way in the dirt, count goes to 1-0. That one also misses way low. Count is now 2-0. No outs here. Leadoff batter Brant Broussard is at the plate. Called strike in the top part of the strike zone. Goes to 2-1. and one. Croson, in his last time out this season, was the starting pitcher in a 14-8 victory over the Ogden Raptors. He threw five innings in that contest. So this one's a pop-up over near second base. Patrick Chung shields his eyes and makes the grab for out number one. Ben McConnell comes up. He was thrown out on that controversial call at second base. In that last time out for Croson, he had... Six strikeouts and one walk against the Ogden Raptors. He also has seen the Range Riders once this year, and that was in the game that turned into a track meet. <laughs> it was five innings pitched from Croson, but a ton of runs in a 22-14 victory for Missoula. Safe over at first. Ben McConnell is able to replicate what Patrick Chung did in the top half of the inning. Take a ball that looked like it might have been a routine out and use your speed to get aboard. That was a great play by Ben McConnell. Make some contact and, well, streak down the line. There were nine runs against Croson in that game that was won by Missoula 22-14. But only four of those runs against him were earned. First pitch misses down low. That breaks up a possible 1-2-3 inning for Austin Croson. He'll throw pitch number 40 upcoming. One out, runner on first. A 1-0 pitch coming in to Ryan Cash. He hits it to, sec or to short. The flip for one, the throw for two. And it is a 6-4-3 double play. So no 1-2-3 inning, but... Austin Croson faces the minimum. It is, oh, and we got Croson just said something to Ryan Cash. And Ryan Cash just kind of shoot him off. It's a little weird. We're getting testy here at Flathead Field. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back for the fourth.
Nick Gatewood will lead off the top of the fourth here. Again, I don't know what exactly that was fueled by at the end, but you might have seen it come across your screen. As coming off the field, Croson turned and kind of started to stare down something, somebody, um, and then said a few words to Cash, who was just jogging back. And I don't know if Cash said something first. Did not see that. But uh, definitely seemed like Croson was fired up. Maybe he was just happy to get the double play ball, get him into that, and, you know, chirping a little back and forth. But in general, Cash is, from all I've seen from him, just one of those incredibly stand-up guys that uh, doesn't seem to get too testy out on the field. He also, you know, a lot of his demeanor, I say, go back goes back to the fact that, one, he's a former quarterback on the football field, and two, he's a former, or he's a coach's son as well. So he, he knows, don't do anything stupid to, you know, screw up uh, your team or anything like that. Uh, speaking of things that might be ill-advised to... Uh, do to hurt your team there. Nick Gatewood swings on the 3-0 pitch and grounds out to Ryan Cash at second base. Again, everybody has their mojo, but that was uh, another trend that we see from Missoula where they're often given the green light on 3-0 if they want to go for it. That one fails to work out on Gatewood and a called strike in there. was pitch number 51 from Rob Hamby. The 0-1 with one out and the base is empty. Comes in. Another grounder over to Cash. He charges, fields, and flips for out number two. According to my sources in the dugout, it might have been Cash that was chirping a little bit first. So, you know, maybe <laughs> maybe delete what I said. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you. Go to our Facebook page. Posted an interview with Ryan Cash last night. And if you know football well, you'll listen to Cash talk. And it, it is quarterback to a T, the way he talks about his team, the way he talks about his approach. And, you know, I, I was I was a left tackle. And he's the type of guy that you can clearly see his left tackle, his O-line, his wide receivers, um, you know, following what he has to say and getting behind him. You can clearly tell that. That's the reason why he finished up his high school career with the seventh most passing yards and passing touchdowns in Texas high school history. The 0-2 coming in to Keaton Greenwall. Swung on to Brant Broussard. He'll field and throw, and a nice stretch from Brody Wofford is out number three. A hat trick of ground outs. We head to the bottom of the fourth.
Bottom of the fourth here at Flathead Field. It's one to one, our score line between the Missoula Paddleheads and the Glacier Range Riders. Austin Croson fired up as he came off the mound last night, last inning. Did not pitch last night. And having a much better start than the Missoula pitching staff did last night is Austin Croson. Just the solo home run that he allowed to Livingston Morris. That's the only difference. And again, if you didn't hear me say it, 400 feet and 112.1 miles per hour off the bat of the Glacier Range Riders designated hitter today. Foul ball. Count is 0-2 now. Another foul ball, just a check swing that Sam Linscott found a way to get a piece of. O2 again coming in from Croson into Sam Linscott. Ball misses up and away. These two guys have actually put on the same jersey before, different years. As Sam Linscott played in the summer of 2021 with the Bend Elks, and Austin Croson played in the summer of 2018 with the Bend Elks. He only pitched in one game and threw an inning and two thirds, did Croson. That was the summer that he also played. For Casper in the Expedition League, the Casper Horseheads down in Wyoming. As he started his career at Lane Community College where he played that spring. Summer before he actually played for a powerhouse in the West Coast League. The Corvallis Knights, of course, in Corvallis, Oregon, where the home team... Oregon State Beavers call home a Division I NCAA powerhouse in baseball. 3-2 coming in. No outs here as Linscott leads off the bottom of the fourth. Ball four. Linscott a walk. This is really the first time that Croson has been called upon to, to start so many games. With Phillies West, his first and only minor league season, he came out of the pen for 13 games. And I mentioned a 5-1 and one record, so I'm assuming sort of a long relief roll, or at least a, a couple innings, but key spots of the game, and a key spot of the outfield is where this ball heads. Sam Linscott will round and get to third. Easily he is in. Standing up to third and runners on the corners with no outs as Brody Wofford fires a single into left field. Up comes Dean Miller. 0 for 1 today is Miller. He struck out swinging the first time seeing Austin Croson. Croson, his stats tell a different storyline than what you're used to on the baseball field. You're used to seeing lefty pitchers do better against lefty batters. However, lefty batters are hitting much better against Croson than the right-handers, but still, in theory, this advantage should go to Dean Miller. First pitch swinging, and it's off the glove of Croson, and that is going to make every play impossible. A tough break for Austin Croson as he almost was able to grab that one and possibly think about a 1-6-3 double play. Instead, it's an RBI infield single for Dean Miller. It's 2-1, to one, the Range Riders lead. I'll double check to make sure that one wasn't called a error. But I believe it was 
a base hit there as that would have been a tough play for Croson to make. There's a called strike to Livingston Morris. Actually, it will be called an error, at least how we stand right now. Sam Linscott scores the run. And an 0-1 coming in to Livingston Morris. Fouled back. He's behind 0-2. But I'm sure there will be not much strategy change from Croson here, who saw the ball rip 112 miles per hour off the bat of Morris in the first time that they faced off today. Time is called. Home plate umpire does not say who called the time. And now we're back in play. 0-2, no outs, runners on first and second. It's Wofford at second, Miller at first. Ball will miss. Count goes to one and two. The count goes two and two as that one misses off the plate to Livingston Morris. And swung on and missed in. The dirt, he fooled Livingston Morris on that one and is able to get out number one. Up comes Drew Sims. 0 for 1 tonight is Sims. He grounded out to second base. First pitch will miss up and away. Count goes to 1 and 0. And that one will miss inside. Count goes to two and one. Two oh, one out coming into Drew Sims. Just his third game as a range rider. Swung on, and it's going to be a base hit. Green light for Brody Wofford. The throw home will be offline. RBI single from Drew Sims, and the throw into third is out over there. Dean Miller tried to pick up an extra base after that one did go offline. He's thrown out at third base. But an RBI single from Drew Sims makes it 3-1. to one. Drew Sims did not try and go to second base. So he stays at first. Two outs. A runner on first for Robbie Scott, who went yard last night. Also has a ton of speed, which we got to see when he stole two bases. This one's into center field, but on the run, the catch will be made by Keaton Greenwald. Good contact, but two runs across for the Glacier Range Riders. We'll be right back for the top of the fifth.
We're in the top of the fifth inning, and it's 7-8-9. Aikens, Perez, and Chung. 3-1 to one is our score now here in the top of the fifth after uh, RBI from Dean Miller and an RBI from Drew Sims. First pitch misses inside from Hamby into Aikens. Aikens 0 for 1 tonight. Had a well-struck ball, but it was a fly out to center field. And we do have a scoring change as this one's hit to second, and Cash fields it on the run. A line drive out for out number one. It was originally, I thought it was going to be a hit. It was originally called an error, but after our official score look back on it, does call it a hit for Dean Miller, so call it an RBI infield single for the Glacier Range Riders third baseman. And the thing about Dean Miller, first of all, in that summer that he spent in the Northwoods League with the Battle Creek Bombers, he was a tremendous offensive player called strike to Henderson Perez. But he was also a gold glover in the outfield. I believe they call it the, Rawling, the Rawlings best in the field. Um, so not specifically the gold glover title, but essentially he was a top defensive player. Uh, speaking of defense, the Range Riders will have to make some. And Ryan Cash, he's pretty good at it. Fields and throws for out number two. And that just kind of blows your mind even more, knowing that he was a great outfielder for the Battle Creek Bombers. But here he's been asked to go into different roles, play first place, play third base, play in left field, right field, and he's done it all very serviceably. Two outs here in the top of the fifth as Patrick Chung comes up, one for one with that infield single where he beat out the race with Brody Wofford. First pitch swinging. It's going to be a slow roller to cash. He'll field, he'll flip, and he will not beat that one out, will Patrick Chung. A one, two, three, five pitch inning for Rob Hamby. He's uh, getting better as he goes along here. That's what he does. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back for the bottom of the fifth. Great turnout here on this Thursday night in Northwest Montana. A beautiful sunny day of 90 degrees. And plenty of fans making the smart decision to come out. Hey, if you don't know, if you don't know, we are serving ice cream at the stadium now. There's all sorts of different ice cream. There's even, I believe, huckleberry and sorbet. So, it, just so that's on your radar. If, if you're wondering, you're saying, I don't want to come out to the ballpark because, you know, it's hot out and 
you know, they don't have enough cool things to cool me down. Well, of course, we got cold drinks, plenty of that. All the freezers are working. Well, not freezers, but the fridges. This one's hit over to short and Brant Broussard grounds into a 6-3 ground out. But there is that ice cream, and there is not much that beats ice cream in baseball on a hot summer day. If you're one of those people that doesn't like ice cream, then, <laughs> then I'm sorry. I'm sorry for you because uh, ice cream is a, is a glorious thing. 0-1 as that one hits the strike zone against Ben McConnell, who's one for one. He's reached both times, a walk and a single. Swung on and missed. Fooled on that breaker. Count goes to 0-2 now on Ben McConnell. I mentioned some of the other games going on. Let me tell you the current standings in the Pioneer League. It's a two-way tie for first between Idaho Falls and Great Falls in the north. Five and three, five and three. Then a two-way tie for third with Missoula and Billings, both at four and four. And Glacier round out the five teams in the north at three and five. Ball there makes it one and two for Bam McConnell. In the south, real quick, it's Grand Junction at five and three in first. Rocky Mountain at four and three in second. Ogden at four and four is third. Noco, the Owls are three and four and in fourth. And the two and six Boise Hawks round out the five team South Division. Two and two now as a ball missed to Ben McConnell. And he swings and misses at that one. A strikeout for out number two in this three to one ball game here in the bottom of the fifth. Ryan Cash stepping up. This is the. First match matchup between these two since the testy end to the bottom of the third when Cash grounded into a double play to end the inning. And he said something at some point to Croson, which ignited Croson to shout right back at him. First pitch swinging, a blooper into shallow left field, charging in to try and make the play, and it will go off the glove of Willman from shortstop. And more stare downs going on as Croson looks over and gives kind of a wry shake of the head at him. And he's still staring right at Ryan Cash over at first base. I don't know what that one's going to be scored as. Call it a single. It was a tough play for Willman to make. Had to reach over his shoulder, make that difficult catch on the run. Of course, if Riley was able to get into that one, that one's much more expected to be made. As Linscott barrels this one out to center field, looks like Greenwald has a track on it, and he does for out number three. So Cash singles, another look back from the pitcher Croson, and we end the fifth inning, still 3-1, to one, the Range Riders in front.
Top of the sixth here, it is three to one in favor of the Glacier Range Riders. Leading off this inning is the leadoff batter for the Paddleheads. It is Brandon Riley. 0 for 1 tonight is Riley with a walk as well as a strikeout. That one misses on the inside. Count goes to 2 0. Other than Riley, we'll also see Wilman and Lamar Sparks in this inning. Right now we're at 62 total pitches for Rob Hamby through the five fold that he's fired. This one's hit to shortstop, fielded by Broussard, thrown to first, and just in time to make the play for a 6-3 ground out. 63 pitches through five and a third is definitely a pitch count that you love to see if you're Nick Hogan. And so far, the decent outings from the starters where they've been able to go deep. You know, <laughs> you love the fact that they haven't allowed a bunch of runs either. But really, the fact that Solomon was able to go six full and last night Noah Barros went seven full. Those are great, great starts to build behind. Limit what your bullpen has to do. And the bullpen's been magnificent so far this series. No earned runs against the bullpen. No runs, period, against the Range Riders bullpen in two games thus far. And like I said, six and seven innings pitch means that the bullpen only has seen five total innings of action. But they've thrown a blank each time. 1-1 one, one coming in to Cameron Willman, who is 0 for 2 today. Grounded into a double play and reached on an error. A foul ball makes it 1-2. and two. One, two, one out, base is empty. Wellman steps back. Going to take a couple of practice swings with his right hand on the bat. Now he, well, now he conventionally, eventually conjoins the right and left hand together on the bottom of the barrel. And the one, two will be fired in. Swung on, fouled off. Count goes still to one and two with one out. Rob Hamby thus far, 67 pitches thrown, and he has done a really solid job. The only run against him, it does go down as unearned because of the error, but it maybe shouldn't have happened as all, at all as the run that scored was Willman, who was initially called out when he got to first base. And after the umpires met, they decided to change their decision, which, in theory, is... A good job by the umpires to come together and discuss what they saw to change it. This is a slow roller down the third baseline, but it's going to go foul. Two, two, one out. Top of the sixth here for Cameron Wellman, Bakersfield, California native. Showed up, played, played his first game actually against these Glacier Range Riders. After he graduated from the University of New Mexico this spring. And I believe he hit a home run in his first appearance. I'm not for sure on that one, but I think I remember that. The exact same thing that Drew Sims did in his professional debut. Speaking of a home run, this might be one. Oh, it'll one hop and get off the wall. Robbie Scott dived for that one out in deep left field but couldn't come up with it. It was going to be a tough play for him to make, but that is a really solidly hit ball by Cameron Willman, and he reaches with a stand-up double. Up comes Lamar Sparks. He's 0 for 2, a fly out to right and a ground out. That is... I believe the first extra base hit against Rob Hamby. Yes, it is. Just two singles for him thus far by Gatewood and Chung. Gatewood brought in the 
Lone run for the Paddleheads on an RBI single. A called strike there puts Lamar Sparks behind 0-1. Of course, the Paddleheads have Jason Newman, their all-world first baseman, waiting in the dugout. Could be a chance that we see him in a pitch, pinch-hitting opportunity at some point in this game. And, of course, he can also close games, too. So there's a chance we see him on the mound as well. 0-1. Swung on to short. Fielded by Broussard. Wilman won't be able to advance. It is the perfect situation. A 6-3 ground out. No advancement. And two gone in the top of the sixth. Nick Gatewood now stepping in. I mentioned just a half moment ago he brought in the lone run of this game when he brought home Wilman from second. Pretty much this exact situation. With two outs in the top of the first. That put the Paddleheads out to a one to nothing lead. The Range Riders have come back to take their own lead here, three to one. Top of the sixth, two outs, runners runner on first. 1-0 pitch coming in. To the left-hander Gatewood from Rob Hamby. Swung on. Hamby will grab that one. Snow cones it. All 6-7. The wingspan comes out and helps him make that play off the mound. It's a 1-3 ground out, and it's still a 3-1 ball game as we head to the bottom of the sixth. Up steps Brody Wofford. He scored a run his last time up after reaching on a single into left field. Austin Croson still out on the mound, and I'm excited about that because I know that there's a chance that maybe we'll see another matchup between him and Ryan Cash. It would be fairly far flung because I only think he probably has an inning, maybe two for him. And if he does go that full two, it's probably because he'll be pitching well and with Brody Wofford being fourth in the lineup and Cash being two. It seems low, but I like the rivalry going on. Love the battle. This one swung on to right field, backing up to the track. Goodbye, baseball. Brody Wofford crushes a long ball over the right field fence. It's 4-1. to one. The Range Riders home run right there is presented by Hidden Homes Montana. Don't forget, 
Hidden Homes Montana is making a donation to Glacier National Park Conservancy for every home run hit by your Glacier Range Riders at Flathead Field, this homestand. What a moonshot it was for Brody Wofford. Put that one up in the wind that carries it over that right field wall and get it over the 16-foot fence to make it 4-1 to in favor of the home side here in the bottom of the six with no outs. Up comes Dean Miller. First pitch low. Still nobody going crazy in the Missoula Paddleheads bullpen. I thought maybe that would be something to maybe ignite a stand-up at least. So that one misses. Now 2-0. Definitely concerning if he ends up walking Miller or at least allowing a hit after this, that. That might be the straw that will break the camel's back. 2-0, swung on. It's a foul ball. Count goes to 2-1. and one. No outs here. Dean Miller 0 for 2 today. Reached on an error. Actually, it was not an error his last time up. It was a... <laughs> it was what I thought was a hit. What was scored an error and changed to a hit. It was an RBI for him, no matter what, but it does go down as a hit. So he's 1 for 2 today with a hit rather than an error. Skips in the dirt, make it 3-1. and one. 73 pitches right now for Austin Croson. Not a bad day for him. Just touched up enough where if the other side's pitcher is doing good, you're in line for the loss. That's exactly what's happening for him. A called strike pushes the count full. 75 coming up for Austin Croson. And there are casual warm-ups starting up. A right-hander is... Starting to do his arm circles. 3-2. Swung on. Fouled back. We'll do it one more time. Mention the 112 mile per hour, miles per hour off the bat of uh, the home run from Livingston Morris. That one, I think the launch angle definitely is going to be the key for him, but it probably left at a pretty good velocity, and so did this one, but it's hit to the shortstop to throw across the diamond, and a good stretch from Gatewood is good for out number one, 6-3 ground out. Speaking of that exit velo, here comes Livingston Morris, a home run his first time up, a strikeout in his most recent trip to the plate. The Range Riders right now have seven hits. They do have an error. But four runs. Outdoing the total hit count for Missoula, which is at just three. Swing and a miss of most of the ball. It was a foul ball. Count goes 0 and 1. <laughs> the Brody Wofford home run that started off this inning. The highlight right now here in the sixth inning of play, Livingston Morris, as you saw earlier today, though, has plenty skill to add another highlight to the reel. Misses low. Count goes to one and one. Skips right in there. Croson still doing workout on the mound. As a junior in 2019, before he took his talents to pro ball, he was a first-team all-Great Northwest Great Northwest Athletic Conference pitcher. Swing and a miss. Count goes to one and two. He threw a no-hitter in college on April 25th against Concordia. It was a seven-inning no-hitter, but it was still the fifth in the history of the GNAC, where the Western Oregon... Wolves play the first Western Oregon pitcher to do that since 2010. Foul ball. Count stays 1-2. Not only was Croson the 6'5", 
left-handed pitcher. Not only was he a baseball player in high school, he was a basketball player as well. So that one misses. Count goes 2-2. Two and two. On the court, Croson was a second-team all-league player at Monroe High School. As the 2-2 comes in, swung on and missed. Morris comes up empty in his third trip to the plate. And up comes Drew Sims, who has an RBI in his most recent trip to the plate. The thing for Croson right now, as a paddlehead, he has a 100% winning percentage, 5-0 and in 10 starts. And right now, that is at risk for him. Currently in line to pick up the loss, unless his offense can muster up some magic. First pitch to Sims, another breaker that is fired into the dirt. Looks like warm-ups are getting pretty serious for the righty over in the pen for Missoula. And it looks like Michael Schlacht has given some long looks down there. He doesn't sit on the, or doesn't stand on the steps, however. This one swung on a pop-up and into foul territory. Gatewood's there and makes the grab for out number three. So likely the final inning of work from Austin Croson. We'll be right back for the top of the seventh. The home run from Brody Wofford makes it four to one. At the end of the day for Rob Hamby, six innings from the Glacier starter, and it was a great six innings to his resume, building on a streak of three consecutive quality starts by Range Rider pitchers. And I mentioned already the work cut out for him that Brett Barnett has now coming out of the pen. The Glacier Range Riders relief pitchers have not allowed a run in this series, and Brett Barnett will be the man to continue. I'll read you the final line on Rob Hamby in a moment, but first, I'll tell you that Brett Barnett, the left-handed pitcher out of Indianola, Iowa, 6'4", 200 pounds. He comes 
to the Range Riders after a brief stint with the Billings Mustangs where he started this season. And the first pitch will miss outside to Cameron Thompson. Count goes 1-0. and Well, what Billings released has been plenty to have for the Glacier Range Riders. He had a 2-3-5 ERA in seven and two-thirds innings. But the Mustangs cut him loose, and the Glacier Range Riders have utilized him six times. This is his seventh appearance. And we've seen eight strikeouts, eight walks, and a 9-8-2 ERA. For Brett Barnett, he has picked up his first professional win in Glacier. One and two record for him since arriving as a range rider. That one misses high, now 3-0. and Five years with the Jackrabbits down in South Dakota State. Also spent a summer of 2021 with the Bismarck Larks in the Northwoods League. The 3-0 pitch coming in. Make it 4-0 and a leadoff four-pitch walk for Cameron Thompson. Up comes Keaton Greenwald. And I will read you the final line on Rob Hamby. An outing for him and an outing that we've come to expect. Sometimes seems like he's getting stronger as innings go along. He allowed one run in the first. It was unearned. He only had three hits against him in his six innings pitch. And he had two strikeouts. Not a ton, but tell you what, Noah Barros had a similar outing last night where he just ate up some time. A little bit surprised after only 75 pitches that we see the end of Hamby. Thought there could be a chance that maybe we saw him a little bit more. This one's hit on the ground over to third. Miller's just going to make the play over at first, and it will be a 5-3 ground out that advances Thompson for out number one. Thompson now in scoring position for Jared Aikens. Aikens, 0 for 2 on the season. Or on the, ugh, not on the season, we are deep into the season. 0 for 2 on the day. Brett Barnett's seventh pitch. That last one was the first one to hit the strike zone, and it got him an out, so good margin for him, I guess, on strikes. That one hits the strike zone, and it could be another out. Cash fields, cash throws for out number two. Again, the runner is advanced. Thompson gets into third. And now Henderson Perez will have a crucial at-bat for himself. I mentioned we're now at that point with two outs. Top of the seventh, it's a close game, three runs. A little bit curious if Michael Schlag is starting to think about when to use Newman as a pinch hitter. Got to think, unless he's kind of told him that he gets a complete day off, then you assume if you got that bullet in the chamber, at some point he's going to try and fire it. 1-0 with a runner on third and two outs in the top of the seventh. Hit over to third and short and in between them. Henderson Perez comes up with a clutch base hit and an RBI, and the Lead is now just 4-2 to two for the Glacier Range Riders after the RBI single from Perez. Shot off the bat there. A hot one to handle. No chance for Broussard. I was caught in between saying whether it was hit to third and short. I said third. It's closer to short. But it was to neither as Patrick Chung now will step up to the plate. First pitch is a called strike into Chung. Count goes to... 0-1. Oh On the season coming in, Chung was just 5 for 11 with an RBI and a double. 0-1. Oh this one's in the dirt. It'll be thrown to second, and what a recovery from the catcher, Drew Sims, as eventually the runner will be tagged out, and that one, he kept it in front of him. Perez tried to gamble, went to second, and yeah, the arm of Drew Sims catches another paddlehead. We head to the bottom of the seventh 
An RBI single from Perez makes it 4-2, to two, but the Range Riders still lead the Paddleheads. Up comes Robbie Scott to lead off the bottom of the seventh against the new pitcher. The new pitcher is Cody Thompson. Cody Thompson went to Randolph-Macon, originally from Mechanicsville, Virginia, and spent two years in the Frontier League, one with the Southern Illinois Miners and last season with the Gateway Grizzlies before taking his talents out here to the Garden City, Missoula, Montana. Read you his season line in a second. As it's fired in there and it misses off the plate. Count goes to 1-0 for Robbie Scott. He has had some success leading off innings. He let out the bottom of the eighth last night with a solo home run over the left field fence. 5-1 and one on the season is Cody Thompson, a 3-5-4 ERA. Missing high. Counts now 2-0. 28 strikeouts, 12 walks. Three home runs allowed in 28 innings pitched. Last season for the Grizzlies, the Gateway Grizzlies, a 1-4 and four record, a 4-5-7 ERA for him, and 43 strikeouts to 23 walks. A called strike makes it 2-1. and one. Mentioned played three seasons at Randolph-Macon, or at least appeared in three seasons over his collegiate career, a 7-5 record, a 4-0-5 ERA for Thompson. The right-hander. Sets to fire the 2-1. Swung on. This one is powered, but it's going to be too high into center field. Robbie Scott shows some good pop in his bat, but not enough. Out number one is a fly out to Green Walton Center. Up comes Brant Broussard. One of the best walk-up songs. Our official scorekeeper actually texted me the most recent time 
that Brand Broussard was up. That the walkout song for Broussard is her favorite. And I agree. It's up there. It is definitely up there. My strategy, walk-up song-wise, or would be, if I had a walk-up song, would be to throw the pitcher off their game. And if you get them thinking about a classic 90s movie with Michael Jordan, rather than throwing strikes, well, that might just do the trick. Graham Broussard's behind 0-1. One out. Not just Michael Jordan. You got the whole Looney Tunes. 0-2 oh, now. A great one. I haven't even seen the new Space Jam. And maybe that's screwed up. I am a sports fan. Don't have anything against LeBron James. But just haven't seen it. 0-2. Oh, Swung on. This one out to center field. And a carbon copy of the last one. As it has good carry on it. But carry right into the glove of Green Walton Center. Up comes Ben McConnell. One for two tonight is McConnell. He has an infield single, but a strikeout and a walk as well. Four to two is our score here in the bottom of the seventh. Two outs. The Range Riders lead the Paddleheads. Looking to go for at least a series split if they can win today as this is six games in a row at the Range Riders. Also, tonight they are looking for their first ever win on a Thursday. Some sort of something that they have not been able to connect with on this penultimate day before the weekend. Of course, Missoula scored first tonight in the top of the first inning as we get a swing and a miss to make it one and two. When the opponent scores first, the Glacier Range Riders are seven and 25. They've only come back to win games that they've trailed seven times. Swung on a foul ball. Count stays at one and two. McConnell, one for two, seeing Cody Thompson for the first time. This season, the whip for Thompson has been 1.32. That's a really good whip. One, two, coming in to Ben McConnell. Swung on, cracked hard, but foul. Nobody going in the bullpen, and that just pointed my direction to it, just to take note of it. Nobody going to the bullpen for the Range Riders either. I think I did see Brady Kice maybe warming up, but Kice over there no longer up.
I believe is what it will be called for Chung there. I don't know how long we lost you, but I just realized that my levels went out. And that one misses low and inside. Again, I don't know how long he lost you, but I can tell you a little bit of what happened and what has happened this inning. It has been a leadoff walk by Patrick Chung against Brady Kice, and then a pop out by Riley into shallow center field, and then a strikeout by Newman, Jason Newman, who pinch hit in that last at bat in place of Cameron Willman. Likely he will not. Stay in to play at second base. Chung on second. 2-0 to Lamar Sparks. Misses low and in. Now it is 3-0 to Sparks. On deck is Gatewood. No more Jason Newman waiting on the bench to be able to use as a pinch hitter. That one will miss. And it'll be ball four. Lamar Sparks gets nothing to swing at. And it'll be Gatewood that has a chance to tie this game or possibly do even worse for the Missoula Paddleheads. Brady Kice, two four-pitch walks, but when he's put it in the zone... He's been able to fool the batters. Weekly hit pop out and a strikeout of one of the better players for the paddle hits, Jason Newman, when he came in to pinch in. And it looks like we're going to get a pitching change here. Again, sorry about those audio difficulties. Hope you got me now. We'll be right back for... A two-out, two-on situation in the top of the eighth. The new pitcher is the former fighting camel. It's Jonathan Tyler out of Santa Clarita, California, that comes on and has his first real big clutch situation as a range rider pitcher for Jonathan Tyler. He's used to coming out of the bullpen and pitching against really good batters. Of course, playing at Division I Campbell this past year, came out of the pen this past year, meaning 2021, not this spring season. Came out of the pen eight times. Pitched a total of seven innings. Had 15 strikeouts and seven walks. His best season of baseball came 
in the Southern Collegiate Baseball League when he was pitching for the Piedmont Pride at a 3-1 and record and a .47 ERA in 14 appearances out of the pen. Seven saves for him as well. If he was to stay in and finish out this contest without giving up the lead, he would get the save as well. He sees Nick Gatewood, who had an RBI single his first time up, but since has grounded out twice. First pitch misses low. Count goes to 1-0. and Two outs here, top of the eighth. It is one to nothing. The paddle heads. It is it is a one zero count. It is four to two. <laughs> the score. Scoreboard in the bottom left corner is right. I'm not. Might as well not even listen to me. The one zero misses just low. Sims can't get the frame. Count goes to two and zero. Two outs. Both of the runners on base reached on four pitch walks. A strikeout of Jason Newman and a pop out. Got the two outs. 4-2 to two is the score here, but Gatewood can try his best to change that. The 2-0. Swung on into left field. It'll be enough to score one easily. The question will be, will Lamar Sparks come home? He will, and he will score, and the game is tied. A two-RBI double from Nick Gatewood has made it a 4-4 to four ball game. Sparks got a run on contact on that one and made it in easily. And now the go-ahead run is standing on second base for the Missoula Paddleheads. Up comes Cameron Thompson, who had a great night last night, a home run and a double, the only guy that could really get through to Noah Barros. He's 0 for 2 tonight, does have a walk. But in a game that has acquired new life with it being tied up by Nick Gatewood. First pitch misses. Trouble finding the strike zone as the two four-pitch walks put the two runners on. And then Jonathan Tyler fell behind in the count and Nick Gatewood took advantage of it. 1-0 coming in to Cameron Thompson. Swung on, up and over the head of the first baseman, Brody Wofford. Easily another run will score. It is five to four after back-to-back -back doubles gives the Paddleheads the lead. Gatewood scored. Paddleheads in front. Brady Kais was a left-hander, and he was about to face off against two lefties in Gatewood and Thompson. Nick Hogan opted to bring the right-hander, Jonathan Tyler, in, and that proved fatal as we get a swing and a miss. Makes the count 0-1. That brings the book to a close for Brady Kais, who will be Frustrated there as he didn't allow a hit, but he had two runs count on his docket. Two-thirds of an inning, no hits, two earned runs, two walks, and a strikeout for Kais. Brett Barnett came in through an inning and allowed one run on one hit. That was earned. Now the 0-1 coming in with two outs and a runner on second. Swung on. It's popped up. Will it stay in play? Drew Sims cannot get to it, and it will be in foul territory anyway. I mean, it will be out of play anyway. Count goes to 0-2. That one, Drew Sims had no lock on where that one was. And that would have been very bad. If that ball was straight up the chimney and came down right on top of him. Instead, it ends up as a souvenir. Count is 0-2 for Keaton Greenwall. Oh, 
Ooh, crowd wanted it. Tyler wanted it. Didn't get the call. JT still ahead 1-2, but couldn't get the punch out pitch. One earned run goes against him this inning, trying to prevent a second and keep this a one-run ball game for a team that has already hit two homers tonight. Foul ball. Five to four ball game. The Missoula Paddleheads now lead the Glacier Range Riders with a three run top of the eighth. A runner on second and two outs as Keaton Greenwald, 0 for 3 tonight, prepares to receive from Jonathan Tyler. The pitch swung on to first, waiting for it is Wofford, and he fields it and taps first for out number three. The Paddleheads put three across. They lead as we head to the bottom of the eighth. It'll be 3-4-5 to lead off the bottom of the eighth for the Glacier Range Riders in a game that just got a lot more serious. Of course, they ran away with victories last night as well as two nights ago. So they have not had any late-inning drama against the Paddleheads. But last night, with a comfortable lead, they put four runs across, actually five runs across, excuse me, in the bottom of the eighth in order to solidify the dub over the paddle heads. They'll look to replicate that. We'd be much appreciated as we see a called strike to start off to Sam Linscott. 0 for 2 today is Linscott. Also due up is Brody Wofford and Dean Miller. Five to four is our score here. Bottom of the eighth. Pitch misses high. Count is now one and one. Sam Linscott from Marysville, Washington. Against Cody Thompson, who is pitching in his second inning right now. If the lead were to stay in the hand of the Paddleheads, he would pick up the win. A swing and a miss makes it one and two. One, two, no outs as Sam Linscott leads off here in the bottom of the eighth. 
The pitch misses just outside the zone. For Cody Thompson, he has been the paddlehead that has been called upon the most. His 23rd appearance here for the kids out of Zootown. 2-2 two -two swung on to short. Wilman fields and he throws on target and in time for out number one. Should be noted that that definitely was a designated pinch hitter as Newman came in and then was not about to stay in the game at shortstop. Wilman returns to play defense. Up comes Brody Wofford, two for three tonight. His last time up, he hit it 105 miles per hour off the bat. A moonshot into right field that landed 382 feet away from home plate. Doing something like that, well, it would tie the game right here. He's able to do that again. First pitch goes outside. Count goes to 1-0. and One out here. The pitch finds the zone. Called strike. Count goes to 1-1. One and one. A little shake of the head by Wofford. We had a warm-up going on in the pen now. I don't know who it is. It might be Timmons over there. Maybe not, though. Thought about going did Wofford, but he holds back. It, it shouldn't be Timmons because Timmons is slated to start, I believe, on Saturday. Also see the starting pitch for, for tomorrow for the Paddleheads is TBD. Well, it'll be Kevin Kyle for the Range Riders. 2-1. Swung on a foul ball. 2-2. Two -two, one out. Bottom of the eighth. Brody Wofford two for three tonight with a home run and a single. Now up at the plate. Facing a deficit for the only time in this series other than when the Range Riders trailed by one. Heading into the bottom of the first as well as the bottom of the second. Swung on to right field. It's back. It is gone. Goodbye, baseball. Brody Wofford on two straight at-bats has gone yard. We are level at five apiece. Cody Wofford, not once, but twice tonight. A two-home run ball game. Dean Miller hypes him up, as now he will have to follow him up. The third home run of the day, the third solo shot of the day. And I can tell you that Range Rider home run is presented by Hidden Homes Montana. Don't forget, Hidden Homes Montana is making a donation to Glacier National Park Conservancy for every home run hit by your Glacier Range Riders at Flathead Field, this home stand. Signed two different donation checks to GNP Conservancy in Brody Wofford's name. We're level. That one came off the bat just about the same way, just about the same place, and it was the same result. Five to five is our score in this back and forth affair. Missing high count goes to two and zero for Dean Miller. He's ahead on Thompson. Now the two zero will come in, and he swings on that one. It's hit hard to second base, but Chung fields it and throws for out number two. Up comes Livingston Morris now. Two outs, and the other home run today is in his name. He cracked a shot down the left field, the left center field area. All the way back in the bottom of the second. Now, does it again. He could give 
the Range Riders the lead. That pitch goes high. Count goes to 2-0, and or 1-0, and excuse me. Two outs, nobody on. Here on the bottom of the eighth, a 5-5 five five contest. <laughs> what a battle between these two teams on a Thursday night. Ooh, Morris was thinking long ball. Foul ball makes it one and one. One one with two outs coming in. Misses. Counts now two and one. Two one, two outs. Bottom of the eighth. Livingston Morris at the plate, one for three. Swing and a miss. Count goes to two and two. Two two comes in and it'll miss. That one did not miss by much. You can tell how Perez tried to get that frame call that he thought it might have been strike three. Disagreed upon by Brandon Snyder, our home plate umpire. Three, two, two outs. Bases empty for Livingston Morris. That is a high fly ball. Lost by Perez. The pitcher is going to come in. He's going to make the play. No, he's not. He's going to drop it. Immediately, Perez lost that one as it's so difficult to see that ones those that go right up in the air. For the catcher. But the pitcher, Cody Thompson, had his eyes locked on it, was waiting for his catcher to eventually call him off, and then he kind of got thrown into it. That one might go down as a foul ball error on the pitcher. But it doesn't matter that much right now because it only matters in the sense of if any runs come across and now they will be unearned against Cody Thompson because of his error there. Called strike three as the crowd celebrated before they saw the strike three call. It's a solo home run by Brody Wofford that makes it a tie game. We head to the ninth. Don't go anywhere. You're watching the Range Riders and the Paddleheads on YouTube.
We got 7-8-9 here in the top of the ninth. Jared Akins as well as the number eight batter Perez and the number nine batter Patrick Chung. We do have a new pitcher as well. It is a guy who has come on and found his spot as a closing role for the Glacier Range Riders this season. Now comes on with an opportunity to get himself a win if the Range Riders can muster up something in the, the bottom of the ninth. It's number 37, Justin Coleman. If he is able to find a win, it would be his first professional win. Another called strike. Count goes to 0-2. It's 1130 on the East Coast, as well as in eastern Tennessee, where Justin Coleman is from. And I can guarantee his family is back there watching. His mom actually checked in with us on Twitter after I pondered about that last time on Sunday when we saw Coleman pitch. And they stick it out. And they're probably really happy that this game has gone by with some alacrity. And maybe they'll get the chance to get to sleep before midnight. 1-2, no outs for Justin Coleman. Nice breaker that is hit and deflected off of Coleman. Brant Broussard makes the adjustment and over at first, it's called safe. That one would have gone down as a 1-6-3 ground out. Instead, the deflection that Coleman made slowed that ball up enough where where Aikens was able to beat it out. Oh, a tough break there for the Range Riders as a go-ahead run gets to first base. Henderson Perez comes up now, one for three tonight. He has an RBI single to his name. Five to five is our score here in the top of the ninth. Justin Coleman on the mound. I'll read you the rest of his stats when I have a chance to look up. This one squared down the first base line, but it's going to go foul. Count goes to 0 1. No outs here. Runner on first. Top of the ninth. Perez up. Chung on deck. Riley in the hole. Coleman, the rest of his stats, a 5.95 ERA. This is his 17th appearance. And the runner's going. This one is bunted back to Coleman. And it's an easy play over at first. It was hot running there by Aikens. Or else that one could have had a chance to just be thrown to second for a force out. But it does put a go-ahead run in scoring position for Patrick Chung. He just dribbled that ball to the, or dribbled the bat to the, <laughs> bounce past it to the back kid. The back kid forgot to come out and grab it, and then he grabs it, flicks it over to the dugout, and it one-hopped and was caught by the back kid. That was impressive for Chung. Let's see if he can keep it going after the sacrifice bunt. First pitch from Coleman in. Foul ball. On deck is Riley. Unless we get a double play, we should see the Paddleheads left fielder. We've seen Chung drop down a couple opportunities and attempts to try and bunt for hit. Doesn't seem like he's looking for that here. That one will miss high. Count goes to one and one. Finishing out Coleman's stats coming in. He has 24 strikeouts to nine walks. Come into some clutch situations and handled them well. This one misses inside. Aikens takes a big secondary lead, but it's a good snag behind the plate from Drew Sims. That makes it 2-1 and one and keeps the runner Aikens at second. Chung, one for two tonight, reached on the infield single down the first baseline. 2-1 will come into Chung from Justin Coleman. Swung on. It's a broken bat. Robbie Scott will come in to play it. He'll throw to first on target and in time. Two, on, two gone, but Aikens moves up to third base. Six, 
And now it's a clutch situation for Brandon Riley, just as much so for Justin Coleman. Has enticed playable balls every time, but an unfortunate deflection allowed the first runner to reach Akins, and he's been pushed across by a sack bunt and then a ground out. Two outs, top of the ninth. If Akins crosses the plate, he gives the Paddleheads the lead here in the top of the ninth. The pitch. A called strike to Brandon Riley. Riley 0 for 3 tonight. Does have a walk. Last time up, he popped out to shallow center field. When tied after the eighth inning, the Range Riders are 500. One win, one loss when tied going into the ninth. This one swung on. It's a base hit. The Paddleheads have the lead. An RBI single up the middle. And it's 6-5 to five in favor of Missoula. The Range Riders are not done, of course. They got Sims, who's been red hot since arriving two days ago. Robbie Scott and Brant Broussard all waiting and due up in the bottom of the ninth. But this would be a heartbreaker for the Range Riders, who seem to have controlled most of this game except for the top of last inning and the good small ball play that we've seen from the Paddleheads this inning in terms of getting Akins over to third and finding that clutch hit in the key situation to get him across. Cameron Willman up now. 0-1 is now 1-1 after that one misses outside. Two outs. Justin Coleman, he has not had a professional win, but he also has not had a professional loss. And as of right now, he is in that unfortunate situation where he has to sit back and watch what his bats can do in the bottom of the inning, no matter what, because they could very well come back and give him his first professional win. Also, if they're not able to get at least one across, it could be his first professional loss. Called strike, count goes to two and two. Two outs, Riley on first here in the top of the ninth. The Range Riders still out hitting the Missoula Paddleheads, 9-8. to eight. But the runs are in favor of the visitors. The pitch misses high. 3-2, two, two outs. Riley's going to get a go on the pitch. Lots of speed from Riley. He's not a guy that will steal bases. But when he's moving downhill, one of the fastest players on this Missoula squad. That's why he leads off. Cameron Willman, one for three on the day, prepares to receive. Coleman sets at the neck and fires. Swing and a miss. No, it's a foul ball. Just stays alive. Almost had the punch out pitch, did Coleman, but he's going to have to fire his 19th pitch of the inning. When a ball comes back to you as a pitcher, you try so hard to try and glove it, and Coleman there, when he reached down and the heater came off his body, unfortunate for him, and that one misses high. It's a ball four. That leadoff batter with Akins, it looked like Broussard was probably going to be able to make the play at short, and there's no way, of course, that Coleman could know that. Just a tough break. Tough break and a tough bounce and slowed it, and slowed it up enough where it allowed Aikens to reach, and that is the difference right here in the top of the ninth after he reached on the Riley RBI single. First pitch is a called strike to Lamar Sparks. 0 for 3 is Lamar Sparks. He did walk his last time up and later score on the double by Nick Gatewood that gave the Paddleheads a tie game. Before Thompson doubled, Gatewood scored, and the Paddleheads took the lead. And then a Brody Wofford 430-foot bomb in the bottom of the eighth. Tied the game back up. Foul ball. It's 0-2. Lamar Sparks up. Gatewood on deck. Thompson in the hole. 
Sims, Scott, and Broussard. Again, the bottom three in the lineup, two up for the Glacier Range Riders. When we get to the bottom of the ninth, the 0-2 with two outs coming into Lamar Sparks. He swings on it. He's going to lace this one in the shallow right field. The green light will be on. The throw will come home, and it will be just late. An RBI single. It's 7-5 now. Missoula leads. Both runners advance on the throw. They're at second and third with two outs. I've been saying it the last couple days, but this Missoula squad, you can never count them out of a game. And, of course, this, this game never got too far away from them. But they've shown in the past two innings their prowess, even with their offensive MVP to this point, Jason Newman coming in and striking out in his pinch inning opportunity. They've worked around that, around that just fine and scored a ton of runs, five runs. Make that five runs in the past two innings, six runs in the past three innings that have brought them back into this contest. Foul ball by Gaywood. Count is 0-1 with two outs. It's a 7-5 ball game here in the top of the ninth inning. The 0-1 swung on. This one's to right field. Lynn Scott has a beat on it and grabs it for out number three. It's a two-run top of the ninth by Missoula. Reminiscent of their Father's Day come from behind victory in the top of the ninth. Will it be the same result where Missoula can hold on, or will the Glacier Range Riders have something to say in the bottom of the ninth? Don't go anywhere. The Range Riders trail the paddleheads 7-5. It's Sims, Scott, and Broussard. The last chances for the Glacier Range Riders, a game that they have led most of the way, but now trail by two here in the top, in the bottom of the ninth, after a top of the ninth that went the opposite of how they wanted it to. The closing pitcher tonight for the Missoula Paddleheads is the right-hander, 6'1", 195 pounds, Sam Hellinger. Seattle, Washington native comes in after playing two seasons in affiliated minor league baseball. And the first pitch he fires to Drew Sims is a called strike. In the minors, a 6-6 six and six record. Spending his time in the Rangers organization as well as the Cincinnati Reds organization. A foul ball and Sims is behind 0-2. Again, 6-6 six and six record, a 4-2-3 ERA. 83 innings pitched and 111 career minor league affiliated strikeouts. 50 walks for him to those 111 Ks. The 0-2 coming in to Drew Sims, who's one for three. Foul ball. Sims stays alive. This season for Missoula, he has a 1-0 record, a 2-5-9 ERA. Five saves, as him and Jason Newman have been the closing options usually. And... 48 strikeouts to 11 walks. Oh, 2 check swing. Point over to first, and they call Sims out swinging. Bobby, 
the appeal to the first base umpire and first base umpire Stu Bertrand knew it was two strikes because he knew he was punching out the batter Sims by calling it a strike swinging and he did exactly that. Big punch in motion from him out number one as Robbie Scott steps up to the plate. First pitch misses outside. Count goes to 1-0. and Right now, the Range Riders' comeback would be a great birthday present for Nick Hogan. who's celebrating his birthday today, but that one has popped up in the infield. Robbie Scott runs in and doesn't run into Nick Gatewood, who comes up and makes the play. Two gone here in the bottom of the ninth. Up comes Brant Broussard. He is the last chance for the Glacier Range Riders. 0 for 3 tonight is Brant Broussard. Has not reached, and he needs to reach here. There is no other option if the Range Riders are going to have a comeback in store. Two outs as Sam Hellinger rocks and fires. First pitch swinging, a foul ball. two outs for the Range Riders, reminiscent of all of their Thursdays this season. They are trailing in the ninth inning. Down the middle, a called strike, and the Range Riders are down to their last strike. 0 for 8 on Thursday nights. Roussard trying to prevent that from continuing and going over nine. Skips in the dirt. He'll get at least one more pitch. Sam Hellinger played his collegiate ball at Gonzaga and spent a summer in the West Coast League at Bellingham before signing with that Texas Rangers organization that I mentioned. And now ending up in Missoula, the one-two pitch with two outs. Misses high. <laughs> And the catcher, Nick Cece, who is now into the game, was ready to run out for his handshakes, but was only able to run out just beyond the left-handed batter's box and then throw it back to his pitcher. A 2-2 with two outs coming in now to Brant Broussard. Swung on. It's a high pop-up. It's in foul territory. And it might be the last souvenir ball that we see in this ball game. As it ends up in the stands, we stay 2-2, two, two, two outs, base is empty. Tying run is on deck for the Glacier Range Riders, represented by Ben McConnell. It would need to be Ben McConnell. As with two outs, there's no room for wiggle room. There is no wiggle room. Pitch misses. It goes to 3-2. and two. Crowd here holding on to their seats until they see... Out number 27 against the Glacier Range Riders. 3-2, two, two outs, base is empty. Broussard tries to stay alive. Hellinger rocks, fires it, foul ball. A little bit larger smattering of applause as the fans can appreciate the fight that Broussard is putting in here to try and earn his teammate and sometimes partner in crime, Ben McConnell in that bat. 3-2. Swung on and missed. That is our ball game. The final score of this contest, 7-5 in favor of the Missoula Paddleheads. A tough result for the Glacier Range Riders who took a tie game into the third inning after a solo home run by Livingston Morris even up the contest at one and then two runs in the bottom of the fourth gave the Range Riders a three to one lead they tacked on another in the six with a Wofford home run and then back came the paddleheads one in the seventh three in the eighth two in the top of the ninth and other than a Brody Wofford home run there was no offense to show for it from the Glacier Range Riders the final score, 7-5 to five in favor of the Missoula Paddleheads. Let's go over some of the pitching decisions. As the winning pitcher will be Cody Thompson. He 
got the lead, then gave back a tie game, and then with the lead happening right after he came out in the bottom of the eighth, he gets the lead and the win. He threw two innings, allowed one run, one strikeout, and a walk. Krosa in the starter threw six full, had four earned runs, four strikeouts, and two walks, and Sam Hellinger is going to end up picking up the save after throwing the final inning, getting two strikeouts, and retiring the side in order. The loss will be handed to Justin Coleman. Came in in a tough situation, top of the ninth. Had a bad deflection off his foot that slowed down what would be an infield single. And that run would later score and be the winning run. One more run would end up coming across, but didn't really matter. All they needed was that sixth. And that is all she wrote from Flathead Field. A couple more highlights for both sides, I can tell you. The Glacier Range Riders had a multiple hit performance from Brody Wofford as well as Ben McConnell. And of course, home runs from Livingston Morris and two from Brody Wofford, the first baseman. On the other side, it was two hits from Nick Gatewood and all but one other player in the starting lineup, and that was Keaton Greenwald, the leadoff man. Not the leadoff man, the number six batter. Everybody else was able to get themselves a hit today. No home runs, no triples, but two doubles, one by Willman, one by Gatewood, and one by Cameron Thompson. The game-winning run was scored by Jared Akins, and that made the difference in this 7-5 to five contest and win by the Missoula Paddleheads over the Glacier Range Riders. Good fight by both teams. Missoula finds some late-inning magic and gets the job done on a Thursday night. Make sure you come down to the field or tune back into the live stream next f- t- next tomorrow night. Tomorrow night. Next night. As these paddle heads will be taken on the Range Riders yet again. Friday night, 7.05. Saturday night, 7.05. And also, if you want a Sunday afternoon matinee baseball game to come down to, check it out. 105 right here at Flathead Field or on the broadcast 105 Mountain Time if you're tuning in from across the country or across the globe. Also, if you check out GoRangeRiders.com, there are half-season tickets available as we have just reached the halfway point in this summer season. Thanks so much for tuning in to the broadcast tonight. The final score, Missoula beats Glacier 7-5. to Please have a good rest of your night and stay safe out there.